Hi! On the woodpecker today, I'm so excited of the new feature I will install on my CNC. A rapid change ATC. Since I built my new CNC with Pierre, I added some improvements to it. Like a camera, so I can check what the CNC is doing while I'm editing, and a dust shoe. But none of those improvements made me as excited as this rapid change ATC. Courtesy of the company, I received the premium model, which came with a magazine, an interface to hook up the wire to the CNC, a cable that goes from the magazine to the interface, a dust cover, a flat probe plate, but in the end, well, I was unable to use it, and some 6mm bolts to fix the magazine to the CNC table. <laughs> Those screws are a good thing, because it's quite hard to find them here in America. <laughs> yes, I have some, but they were all given to me by European friends. This tool changer is ideal for any kind of CNC as long as it has a variable speed spindle that can turn both ways. You also need a more powerful controller than the basic gerbil that runs on an AVR to operate it. On the Rapid Change website, I saw that Fluidency was supported, so I designed a piggyback PCB to replace my Arduino Mega. Yes, I could have bought one already made, but What's the fun in that? Now I have to make one choice, where to put the magazine. If I put it horizontally in the back, uh, I won't be able to put a piece longer than my CNC bed. I could install it on the left side, but the left side of my CNC is smaller than the right side, so I can put a narrow piece wider than the width of my CNC. So the only place left is on the right side. Before I can put the magazine in place, I need to do something for the probe. Uh, I really don't want it there, but in the back. So I unscrew the 12 bolts and turn the top around. With the exact measurements found on the website, I was able to create a file to drill holes into my CNC bed. Now it's time to drill some holes. I begin with the small fixation holes. Next, I switch the bit for a bigger one, so I can cut the bigger holes. I'm hoping that from now on, I won't be using wrenches as often. Now that the bit is in place, I need to re-zero it on the table and cut the big holes. Next, I have to tap all the holes directly into the MDF. Now I can screw the magazine on the table. After several measurements and a lot of changes in the config file of Fluidency, I put the first collet in place. But the engage feed rate is way too slow. I have to make several changes in the config file, so it will work as expected. Here you have another view, <laughs> but still with a slow approach. Here are more tests of collets being threaded, but this time with a faster approach. You can see how this works. I'm not changing the speed, this is in real time. I use my longest bit to calibrate the Z height. This is why the Z movement is so big.
But even if the bits can be threaded on the spindle by themselves, I still need to automate this. So I put the probe in place. I quickly noticed that the plate that came with my tool changer is too big because it covers the tool recognition sensor. This is not a big deal because I have a smaller one on end. No more problems. Then comes the wire hookup. This is super easy because there are few of them. One cable is plugged between the magazine and the small terminal box. I add a second connector so I can also hook up the probe. Four wires connect for the rapid change and one for the probe. From those five wires, two are for the power, which can be from 7 to 36 volts, and another one for the ground. The three remaining ones are for the tool recognition, the dust cover, and the probe. All those wires are connected to my new fluid and C board. Here again, it's quite easy, because they are screwed on terminals that can be unplugged if needed. But the installation is not finished, because there's still the dust cover to put in place. Here's a small demonstration of the system working with the dust cover and the probe. But this time, as you can see, I've sped it up by a factor of 13. Now that all seems to be working, it's time to test this. For my first test, I'm going to use those four bits. I made a simple test with seven tool changes and four different bits in Aspire. Here is a simulation of what I want to do. There are two different V bits, one ball nose and one end mill. It's time to insert the four bits in the position I've programmed in Aspire. Before starting the process, I need to pick up one bit so Fluid and C can figure out the difference between the probe and the work surface. After the probing, I zero the three axes like I normally do. After making sure that the three axes are zeroed, I can start the G-code file, which is on the SD card of Fluid and C. Like I did before, I speed this up, but only five times. Here, I must admit that I had to make several tests because a lot of my setups were incorrect and the bits were not tight enough on the spindle. But all those tests gave me the chance to shoot a lot of different angles. Not having to use wrenches is great. If you want more details on the Rapid Change ETC, I will leave the website address in the description and you can also see it right now. Here's the final result. Seven tool changes and everything was done all by itself. You will surely see more of this tool changer in the future. I'm really happy with my new automatic tool changer. But I didn't explain in detail how to switch from a normal verbal controller to fluid and C. Nor did I talk about the pendant you can make for fluid and C. I also didn't talk about how to modify the fluid and C config file so the rapid change can work. If you're interested in having more information about that, just let me know. And this could be a future episode of the woodpecker.